right, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome good to Million Cups. Yet again, are there any announcements? It's hot. It's hot? <laughs> okay. Uh, I know, I know Unwind is coming up on September 26th from 4 p.m. to 6 p.m., and that will be at our office uh, here in Town Center um, on the 11th floor. Um, any other, I don't know, when's the next 757 pitch? Next week, I think. Next week? All right. And then I know the Rise Challenge, the submissions are finishing up at the end of September for the uh, uh, Rise Challenge, for anybody who's participating in that. All right. So uh, again, welcome to Million Cups. Today we've got uh, Mike Dugan from Sales Acceleration. He's going to talk to us a little bit about his company, and uh, I'll let you take it from here. Sure. Thank you, Julian. Pleasure to meet all of you. I wish you could have been there. It was quite a sight. It wasn't a sight that I'd like to see again. Bob was actually on the verge of tears. He had a $5 million annualized business. He just lost his best customer. His best customer represented 40% of his revenue. Bob was shocked. Bob wasn't shocked this customer represented 40% of his revenue. He was shocked the customer actually left. He knew he had too many eggs in one basket. And he deployed a couple of uh, strategies we call hope and prayer to ensure that this one customer worth 40% of his business, two of his $5 million annual business would walk away. Today I'm going to talk to you about how we can prevent situations like that. My name is Mike Dugan. I am an outsourced VP of sales. I am a sales builder. I am not a consultant. I come in assess your situation, build the sales infrastructure required for success, what I call repeatable systems and processes to help your organization, B2B organization, beat your all-time sales record. We're gonna take a look at the research here and see what's happening in the small business world which is dramatically different from sales in public companies, the Fortune 100, Fortune 500, where I spend 25 years of my life that report to Wall Street every quarter. Six out of 10, got a little problem with the uh, computer here, haven't had anyone travel with their sales reps on a sales call in 12 months. What if Nick Saban said, hey, we're gonna practice all week and you guys go to the game. I'm gonna hang back, I got a party to go to. The sales call's the game. No one on a sales call, how do we know what's happening? How do we know what our sales reps are doing? A recipe for disaster. Seven out of 10 don't have individual sales targets for their salespeople. Here's what I can tell you about targeting and goals. A goal is a lot easier to hit if you have one. A target's a lot easier to hit if you have one and if you know where it is. Salespeople need targets. They need quotas. Great salespeople want quotas. Seven out of 10 small business owners also act as a sales leader. Now, I get it. We're trying to get off the ground. We gotta wear multiple hats. My question is, do you know what you're doing from a sales perspective? Can you build a compensation plan? Can you build a sales process? We'll talk about a sales process in a minute. And do you have the time to hold weekly sales meetings collectively and individually? And if you don't, you're doing your sales team a disservice, but more importantly, you're doing your organization a disservice because you've now made yourself a part-time CEO. And I want my company to have a full-time CEO. Eight out of 10 have no formal or repeatable onboarding process. We're real good in the small and mid-sized business world about saying, here's what you do. Hey, Julie, go make your number. What we don't do is tell Julie how to make her number. Hey, Julie, we're gonna spend a week with you. We're gonna take you through the sales process, each step in the sales process. We're gonna go out there and travel with you. We spend $10,000, five to $10,000 recruiting someone. We spend another $50,000 on probably base salary before we terminate that person at nine months. The average length of the small business sales rep is about 11 and a half months. Small business owner surveyed said, even if I know I hired the wrong person, I don't, I don't uh, terminate them for nine months. Eight out of 10 haven't performed an annual performance review on their sales rep in the past three years. I go into small businesses, first thing I hear sometimes is, Mike, you know, we probably have to terminate Bill. Oh, really? What's going on, Bill? Oh, he's horrible and he knows it, blah, blah, blah. So, well, do you know he's horrible? When's the last time you worked with Bill? Well, I haven't worked with Bill in a while, but it, he's not bringing in the numbers. I go talk to Bill. Bill says, hey, Mike, what's going on? I said, good. How you doing? He says, I'm doing great. Hey, confidentially, what do they think you hear? 
they love me. They love me. They trust me so much they don't have to travel with me. No one gets my junk. Nobody talks to me. They love me. What a disconnect. Nine out of ten will promote their top sales rep to become their sales leader. Here's what the research tells us. The skills and abilities of a sales representative are virtually diametrically opposed 180 degrees apart from a sales leader. <coughs> Salespeople do two things. They do what you pay them to do, and they do what you measure. Sales leaders need to know how to build a compensation plan. They need to know how to build a sales process. And after the presentation, I'll build one for you. They know how to hold the weekly meetings, to role play, to lead, to motivate. Sales reps don't know that. Nine out of 10 don't know their top five metrics. For example, if you got a $12 million business, that means you have to do a million dollars a month, which means you have to do 250 a week, which means you'd have to do 50 grand a day. I walked to sales leaders, hey, did you have a good day today? Yeah, the sun was shining, it was my birthday, uh, got a kick last night, oh, that's great. I walk into other sales leaders and I say, how was your day? Said, it was great. We need to sell 50 units, whatever it is, product or service. We sold 52 last week, or last uh, Tuesday, whatever it was. People need to understand their personal metrics for success. Nine out of 10 don't have a digital sales <coughs> process. Digital sales process is important because that's where we know the backlogs are. That's where we know where the sales training is needed. If we have a 10 step process, normally we have between a five to seven step process. Four steps right here, things have to happen in each process before we can move to the next process. We call the time right here, the sales cycle. If we have 10 deals backlog in this step, we know we've got a problem in that step. If we know Julie has four deals at, at this step, we know Julie needs training in this step, which may be discovery. A digital sales process where you can press one keystroke and find out what's stuck where is critically important. Nine out of 10 don't have a compensation plan in the sense of behaviors they're seeking. Sales reps do two things, what you pay them to do, what you measure. Our biggest driver of human behavior in the sales world is a compensation plan. So the common issues we resolve are everything I've kind of talked about. Compensation plans, lack of expectations. What we do, it's different. We don't just tell you what's wrong and what to do about it, the way a sales consultant would. We thoroughly assess your environment and personally implement the changes. In the end, you'll get results, not a nice shiny book with a lot to do. When your consultant leaves, you're normally left with a big shiny book and a pretty big to-do list that you don't have the time or the skill to implement. So let's get into the process, diagnose the situation, build it, and then execute it, a three-step process. The results we're getting, an end of the revolving door of sales reps, discipline and accountability of all salespeople, daily CEO visibility, and quarter-over-quarter -quarter growth, to mention a few how it works, phase one, phase two, and phase three. Discovery phase one takes about four days. I come in and look at everything, including your financials. Stage two, genesis, the infrastructure build, three to four months. I build your customized sales presence. I build your compensation plans. I build all the infrastructure, which we'll go over in a minute, and then nine to 18 months, I roll up my sleeves and I implement for you. Work on your business on a daily basis, commit one to two days per week. Why do we have this need? Because in the small business world, the skills and abilities of what I do, sales leaders in public companies are not available. Necessity is the mother of invention. And in the public sector, we must make our number every quarter or we get terminated. God forbid you miss two quarters in a row, your boss, the CEO, he or she gets terminated. So we develop systems and processes to virtually ensure we can meet our number on a quarterly basis. Small business, a lot of times we don't have a goal. Not only do I not have an annual goal, we don't have a quarterly goal. The skills and abilities are not here in the small to mid-sized business world. I and people like me are bringing them here. So the catch-22, I call it, is just what I went through. So if you want to hire a sales leader, here's a three-process, three-step litmus test for you. Ask them about their current sales process. They should be able to draw it on a piece of paper for you. 
Tell me how you'd construct a comp plan. They should be able to tell you about the compensation plans they've constructed and how it can move certain behaviors. And what do you look for in a new sales hire? I look for three core competencies of burning, competencies of burning desire to excel, proven sustained track of re record of success, and the ability to initiate, grow, and leverage personal relationships in the pursuit of business. I know that because I'm a qualified sales leader who's been doing it for 30 years. And those are the core competencies I can't teach, which means I need to hire them. We take entrepreneurs to enterprise through systems and processes. The process, which I'll go through quickly, step one, strategy, methodology, analytics, organization. Step two, targeting, CRM platform, which is a digital online platform, pipeline management, developing your KPIs, developing the sales process unique for your particular business, developing the compensation plans that will drive your salespeople to common uh, needed behaviors on a daily basis, participate in regular executive meetings, the weekly sales meetings, the one-on-one -on -one meetings, establish an annual business planning process, validate your, in this case, your 2018 sales team, and then recruit, <coughs> hire, and onboard your people as well. I do it all on an outsourced basis. Then provide specific sales training as required and establish sales travel pipeline collaboration. <coughs> Phase three is the leadership, where I actually come in, I'm meeting with your people, I'm motivating them. It's about expectations and accountability, not my expectations, but expectations that I facilitate the discussion toward that they agree to, and they're not Mike's expectations, but instead they're Julian's. Like, Julian, we had a discussion last week, these are your expectations, yeah, you're right, Mike, I guess, gotta do it. Phase four would be the leadership coaching and mentoring, where I backfill myself. I recruit your new sales manager after 12 to maybe 18 months, get him or her on board. If they don't have the skills and abilities, many of them don't, I teach them how to implement it, this infrastructure and build it. And we have a 16 week course especially for that transition. How much? I'm not gonna go into specific details here, but we can charge for just the build out, the genesis, or we can charge also for the outsourced VP of sales. We can charge in a lot of different ways, but the key is when I do an outsourced VP of sales, half of my compensation is skin in the game. What's that mean? It means that half of my total compensation is based upon my ability with my skills and how I built your sales structure to move the number. And if I don't move the number, you don't pay me. I will tell you, that's where I make most of my money because I'm pretty good about building this infrastructure. It's not rocket science, but it's a very repeatable science that we do again and again in the public sector. I'm gonna leave you with a final video because people have told me I can come across as a bit of a hard ass. For some reason, I don't get it. And leadership is about so much more. 70% is about motivation. It's about inspiration. And it's about making people believe in themselves. There's some music, but we're not hearing it. Be happy to take any questions. Sir. So it sounds like you, you say you a lot. Is it you or is it you and some other people? That you Currently have? it's just me. So do you have a process of your process that you can train somebody else so that you can scale this? Because if you're tied up with 
there's obviously a limit to how much you can do. Yeah. You know, can you train somebody else to be you? Yes, it's yourself? it's very scalable. Again, it's not rocket science. It's teaching them the systems and processes. The only part that is quasi not scalable, where they would need my help or someone with my scope and breadth of experience, would be on the leadership side, which, you know, people say, oh, uh, sales is so much art and you know a little bit of science. No, sales is like 99% art. There are some leadership specifics that only long periods of experience can can help you with. But yeah, it's very scalable, and that's what we do when we backfill ourselves. Great question. Sir, is your goal to scale or just kind of keep doing it as yourself and just work with companies you choose to work with? At this point, I'm not looking to scale. At this point, I'm looking to really help small business. I, I think this is a need that most small to mid-sized businesses don't have. And quite frankly, they don't get it. They see the symptoms. I, I can't grow. My number's flat. I can't keep good salespeople. Um, I can't recruit good salespeople, and these are all symptoms of problems. For example, uh, I, I can't keep good salespeople. Well, we're not, we're in all likelihood, in nine out of 10 cases, we're not onboarding them. We're not giving them a sales process. A sales process is five to seven steps. Some people call it a recipe. I call it a roadmap towards success. And if you follow this, you will succeed. And we measure digitally how much you succeed, and normally your sales process should give you 30 to 33%. One individual I worked with, I got him, he was a crawl space company, I got him up to 40%, that's a little unique. But normally about a third of everything we drop in. And little things like getting your pipeline clean. A lot of people keep folks in their pipeline who should never be there. One of the keys to success is getting rid of people in your pipeline who will never close. Because if we're stuck at second to last stage of close, and those people never close, how much time, effort, and money have we spent on that? We need to get them out of step two, which is normally a qualification process, because they'll never close. And we need to know that early. Good question. Any other questions? Sir. What is the size of businesses that you are you can be most helpful? Like yes. obviously not one or two people yes. startups. It's normally a million to thirty million where we can be most helpful and normally in a B to B environment, business to business environment. Over thirty million you should have enough feet on the street, probably over ten, where you're gonna need a full time sales leader. I've done this so much, I work for the organizations I work with every day, but I give them one or two days physically in the office a week. The one or two days are to, number one, meet with them, have the uh, group sales meeting, and have the one-on-one -on -one meetings. And then the second day would be my co-travel. Or if it's a telephone, I'm sitting next to people with a plug-in on the telephone next to them. Because we need to monitor what's going out there. So 30 million, normally there are over 10 sales reps, and. Uh, I would meet with them and say, you know, I can help you find a great sales leader, but you're going to need something more. Under a million, uh, they're really not in a position to afford what I'm doing. Uh, and I would urge them to uh, maybe take a, a different course of action. So how many companies do you take on at a, at a three. time? Three. Currently three. <coughs> Is there a certain industry you prefer working with? We're industry agnostic. Um, I've done a lot of things. The only things I shy away from are DOD type contractors because that is very unique. And it's kind of a hard thing to say here in Virginia Beach but because um, there are a lot of DOD contractors in there. Um, I've done everything from crawl space companies to engineering companies, software companies. I spent almost 30 years of my life in the high-end medical device community working for Medtronic and I managed uh, you know, 100 plus sales reps at one point on a national basis. Very heady stuff, coronary stents, um, things of that nature so that people say well wow you know can you can you do this in this particular field. A lot of the stuff that I developed processes for, a lot of the industries I've worked in um, I don't know 
a ton about that particular product. And the product's not important. And I probably the most critical error, the most common error I see in sales reps, especially for engineering firms, is that they want to go in and talk about their product. And even on the website, you see a lot of engineering firms, and manufacturing firms, they've got the ball bearings and the gears right there. But people don't care about that. They care about themselves and they care about their pain. Something we call loss aversion is what sells. And loss aversion means that 80% of the people in any given room will take almost immediate action to get out of pain. And only 10% or 20% of people will take action to say, oh, that's cool, let me do that. So we need to identify the pain. The way we identify the pain is we don't talk about our product at all until maybe the last five minutes of a one hour presentation when we're talking to a customer. We're trying to understand them and their pain and what problems they have. And kind of like a female jigsaw puzzle during this discovery conversation, we understand, okay, that's what their pain looks like. And our goal is to say, well, that's how our product right there fits into your pain. They want their problems solved. Salespeople are problem solvers. It has nothing to do with the product until later on in the process. Great question, whoever asked that. Yes? Um, is this process, uh, your general process, is it something that you created or are you part affiliated with a? I'm an advisor with Sales Acceleration, so I'm a licensed advisor. So uh, I paid for the licensing. Uh, there are. <coughs> about 50 or so folks like me out in the United States. It is not a franchise. There, I, got, I had a top secret clearance in the Navy and what they did to me is probably makes the government's uh, <laughs> process look minor. Um, and so uh, I work with them and I do give them a piece of my first month's revenue when I get a new client. Sir? Is this territory specific at all? Since no, it's not. Okay. It's so not. <clears throat> um, so they can put anyone anywhere they want and for example I'm currently working with a client down in Raleigh. Uh, some people have an expertise. Expertise I will tell you is not important but because I've got such a pedigree in the medical device arena the medical device people find me kind of outside this area and that's why I'm down in Raleigh that a lot of the medical device corporations work with private equity firms and then once a private equity firm finds out that you know, you're able to help a company, they have other companies that they're interested in helping as well. So um, the former Met, uh, CEO of Medtronic was up in New York and um, gave me that referral down in North Carolina, but it's really industry agnostic. But I can see how people think that it's very product or service specific, and it's not. Great question. How, how do you find business? How do you find your customers? Referral networking, two, well, three ways, actually. Referral networking, um, where I build a referral network, uh, meet with Vistage chairs, uh, outsourced to CFOs, people who swim in the same pond as I do. I employ a gentleman out of Memphis, Tennessee, who uses a LinkedIn algorithm with AI that runs 24-7. Uh, and then I've got a website uh, as well that is sponsored by the uh, uh, credentialing agency up there. So that was partly my question, but the other part is, it sounds to me like some of the ways you sell yourself to a client is the fact is your reputation and your background and experience, right? Well, so I actually, although I'm a sales guy, I try not to sell what I do. Yeah. I try and get a warm handoff. And I try and simply be educational. I think selling reduces my credibility and I'm really there to learn if I can be of value to them or not. And if I can't be of value, and there are a number of different reasons I can't, I don't take the engagement. But, so I don't know if that answered your question or not. I got a buddy my age, retired from doing stuff. Yeah. He was in the healthcare world. Yeah. He flies all over the country, drives all over the country, getting one, two, and three engagements. And his business is telling the companies how to comply with all the changing and 
obfuscating FDA requirements for healthcare products, right. medical devices, and right. Devices, right? He doesn't advertise anything. It's from his 35 years of experience, Word I just call him up. And it sounds to me like a lot of what you do so far has come from that kind of referral, right? Well, no, not exactly. Huh. Um, a lot of it has come from my referral partners in this area. So, although I've been doing this work for 30 years, I hung out this shingle one year ago. Now, yeah, one of my clients came from my own background medical devices, but you know, three of my clients just came here through my networking and referral partner uh, connections. Might as well ask how long you've been doing it. But yeah. You said that, so, but I was curious. Uh, of the people that you've dealt with yeah. so far in your time, is there anybody that just didn't work out? So, despite my boyish good looks, I, I am, I've been walking the planet for a lot of years. And I'm at the point where I can figure that out pretty quickly. And I do what's called an OSSD, on-site sales discovery if I think there's going to be an issue. Let me give you a couple examples of issues. The owner could perhaps not take the direction well, and so I need the owner to be transparent with me, open the books to me, I need to see all the financials, and if he or she is not willing and able to do that, then I don't take the engagement. A lot of times I can spot that up front, sometimes I can't. If we dig in deeper, a lot of small to mid-sized businesses are family-run. And so Uncle Billy may be the sales leader here. And we need to understand what's going on with Uncle Billy. And more than likely, Uncle Billy's not going anywhere. So how can we work in this organization? And then I'll do an on-site sales discovery. And that's where I go to each department and I interview these people. And I've got a set of list of questions and I find out what's going on. And at the end of that kind of three to four day period, I know whether I want to take the engagement if I can't figure it out on the front end. Is your end goal potentially to find a company you really enjoy working with instead of just going from company to company, find a company you stay with for a long term period? No, that's why I kind of, I, I got out of that, right? That's kind of doing the opposite of that. Um, so I got out, I used to, uh, I drive a Mini Cooper because my commute was to the airport three, sometimes four days a week. Um, and we're all familiar with that. And uh, um, I don't want to play that game anymore. Find companies. I mean, we've only been doing a year, I guess. But you find that there's companies that that look good in the, you know, at the discovery, but then they say they want process, but then they balk at actually having the rigor of a process. I haven't found that yet. I found that, you know. So I normally it's there are three meetings before I engage normally. There's normally a telephone call when we talk and I ask them a series of questions. We come in. I have a little presentation, which is mostly questions. And it's really kind of by the end of the second meeting that I only talk about what I do. And then there's normally a third meeting that we, you know, fish or cut bait. Um, your question was, do we get in deep and find out it still isn't going to work? I haven't had it happen yet. Uh, it would it's possible it would mean that I didn't do my due diligence right in the OSSD. It's amazing. So when I do this on-site sales discovery, I go and take a pad. I'm in there for three days for eight hours a day. And I tell everyone, hey, your information is confidential. I may share the information, but no one knows it's coming from you. I can tell you in most small and mid-sized business, there is pent up uh, opinion that they are not able to share. And it just starts flowing. And I get a lot of information that a lot of it uh, I never wanted to know, and um, I, did, I don't want to know, quite frankly. But they're pretty good talkers. And they understand the politics of the situation. And uh, especially when I tell them it's confidential, uh, and it is, they really uh, open up quite a bit, so I learned. So I guess what really makes you unique is the how much skin you put in the game. Is there 
if you have much competition, it's doing that. Now, most, most of the consultants go in there and they don't put anywhere near that kind of skin in the game. How many other companies are doing what your organization is doing, I guess? Is there much competition in this? None that I'm aware of. But I think I would, I, and maybe I presented wrong, and so this is on me. I think, so that's one of my unique value propositions. I put skin in the game. I think my, mo my most unique value proposition is that I build it. There's nobody out here who is actually going to sit down and build your sales process. You can bring somebody in from Deloitte and they'll tell you how to maybe build a sales process. And you can bring someone in from another consulting firm and they may actually build the process for you, but they're not going to implement that process. And so what we know about a sales process, it's a living document. We need to iterate every week. Now, after about three or four months, we should be good and we're making tweaks, but we've got to iterate. And so what makes me unique is I'm not a consultant. I don't drop a shiny book there and say, good luck. I say, here's what we're going to do because you need this. I'm going to build this, and then I'm so confident in my ability to build this very good system and process that I'm going to execute it for you, and that's where my skin's in the game. So I'm a builder as opposed to a consultant, but the skin in the game makes it unique as well. Yeah. It's a great question because I was able to, uh, yeah, to, to share another unique value proposition. Thank you for that question. Sir? Um, I'm curious how much of what you do is the company as opposed to yourself. I mean, obviously, 30 years experience in sales management right. has a lot to do with it. Right. But I would think they have a process that you're kind of copying and bringing to or utilizing. So, so there were five people, and we were all yeah, learning this process, so we've been blessed to come into this, and that we're now advisors. And we looked at each other and we laughed. And literally what I was doing for 30 years and what each of them were doing for 30 years. And so we're all from public companies for the most part. Sure. Was virtually identical. It's virtually identical. You know, the sales acceleration process is not unique. Right. You go in, you build a sales process. I build 100 sales processes. You build the compensation plans. I probably build 200 compensation plans. We know how to motivate different types of people. You've got hunters and farmers, and it's all the same stuff. You know, even goals, what we, we break down, you know, the, the $12 million number, 10 sales reps, 1.2 million a rep, that comes down to, boom, 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 break down $5,000 a day. That's huge. That's not rocket science. But if you, if each one of your sales reps knows that they got to hit five thousand dollars a day, and you can pull up on your computer screen, I need to hit fifty thousand dollars a day. You know how things are going every day. That is not rocket science. That is not Einstein type mathematics. That is just a process that works. That's repeatable, with visible goals. So it doesn't take a lot to move these sales organizations. And we can do it pretty easily in one or two days a week because they're small. Repeatable systems and processes, setting expectations, holding people accountable, getting people in the right seats. You know, that's what moves entrepreneurs to enterprise. Repeatable systems and processes. And that's all we do. How long does it take the process with you? Uh, so we start engaging and you know some things you know you in investigated the company and what happens next? Like, how long does it take this whole span of this process with you? Yeah, yeah. Well, depends on how much money you have. Yeah, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Three or four days to come and do the discovery. And people say, well, do you need to do the discovery? I say, well, you walk into an orthopedic surgeon's office and you have knee trouble. And he walks in and says, you need surgery. Well, do you want to take an x-ray? Do you want to do an MRI? Do you want to palpate? you want to feel my knee a little bit? Do you want to ask me to move it? So that's kind of malpractice to come in and say, here's what we're going to do. So we do at least three to four days of discovery. That's, that's a week. Then we start building the sales process. 
So we start building things right away. One of the first things I do is try and hire because the hiring has the longest cook stage. It takes three to four months to get a decent sales rep on board unless you get lucky. I've got a couple of recruiters I work with, one out of Texas that guarantees their people get really good people. So I normally start there unless, and this unless is like 80% of the time, they don't have a sales process. So people say, well, I don't get that, what is that? So I go to the business owner and say, Okay, what are you looking for in a sales rep? What is your, your perfect sales rep? And I get my pen out, and I'm ready to go. Well, they should know how to sell. Okay, that's good. And they should be good with people. All right, good with people. What else? They don't know. So they don't have a problem finding the right salesperson. They don't know who the right salespeople are. And the reason they don't know who the sales right, right salespeople are is because they have, haven't built their five to seven step sales process. And in that sales process, you know, we know normally, so we have prospect and suspect here, maybe we have discovery here, and then we have the qualification here, and we go down to close, won or lost down here. And in each step, we have something. You may need presentation skills here. You may need negotiation skills here. You may need some sort of technical skill if you're in software or something like that. And they say, well, what do you think we need, Mike? And I say, I don't know. Well, we pay it. And I said, I don't know until I can build you a sales process. So I got to build this sales process. I got to speak with people. I got to ride with your reps. I got to talk to you. I got to go on these sales calls. I got to do this. And once I build this, then and only then do I know the skills and abilities that are needed. And anybody else that tells you, any recruiter tells you, these are the skills and abilities you need to be successful in this business is lying to you because they don't know. I'm going to tell you what you need because I built your process. So, chicken and the egg. Yeah, I'd like to start recruiting right away, but most people don't have a sales process. So I've got to spend three weeks building this. The first thing after I do, as soon as I get some semblance of a sales process, I can get all the skills and abilities down on a sheet of paper and call my recruiters and have them go. And we start cooking there. Then we're building the metrics. We're loading into the CRM. We have the CRM uh, teachers come in and teach all these sales reps to do it. These CRMs are so powerful. CRM is where we house this digital sales process. And in each part of the sales process, we have a percentage, maybe five here, maybe 15 here, all the way up to right before close, 85%. And we also keep here all the deals. And let's say this is a $1 million deal, and this is a $2 million deal, and this is a $3 million deal. So that's a $6 million we have right there. 85% of $6 million, we can forecast that. And we know the way that the, what our sales cycle is. And if our sales cycle is two weeks, we can then forecast and say, what's going to happen? And when is it going to happen? And then, near the end of the quarter, because I try and get these companies, let's set a quarterly goal for ourselves. Near the end of the quarter, we've got three deals stuck here. I want to close deals. Where do I go? I know directly where I'm going. I'm going to the three deals stuck in this last stage because I just need to do one more thing, get them over the hump. And so this digital sales process, which lives in your CRM, is so important. And CRMs are so great. You hook up your cell phone, each sales rep's cell phone, to the CRM, and it records each call. Their emails are sent right there with their signature line on it. And everything is in this CRM. Business owner comes in one day, looks at the forecast, looks at how he's running. Normally, a graph with a line, red and green up here. You want to be in the green? You know we're doing OK. And there's a numeric number. You want to have, because we, we want to sell 50 a week, or 50 a day, whatever it was. And last week we sold 60 a day, now our number's down to 40 a day. But if you keep it this trend, we know I'm gonna be at 110%. And the sales reps can see that too, 110%. I ring a big bell at 110%, I'm running to 110%. Now we've got the motivation in there if we built the comp plan correctly. So kind of a long-winded answer to a short question. What does CRM do you like? Base, B-A-S-E. If you have a small organization and you want or need one for free, HubSpot. It's free, does everything a small organization needs. Base is about $50 a person. I think that's annualized. I can't remember the prices exactly. But it gives you everything I just told you about. It's good if you have less than probably 40 sales representatives. Beautiful. Everything you need right there. You want to listen to a phone call or you want to see all the emails, you see them. 
AI built in there, sales reps can say who? Letter one, letter two, letter three. Absolutely beautiful. They can see where they are every given day. And if they leave, you've got everything right there. Additional questions? Sir. So last question, what can one million cups do for you? You can get the word out that there is a sales leader in Virginia Beach working with small to mid-sized businesses who can move their number, who can build systems and processes where they don't have to worry about their number again. He knows what he's doing because he's lived at that altitude. And if you can do that for me, I would be eternally grateful. Well, we appreciate you coming out today, Mike, and then as a little token. Thank you. Very much. All right. And then uh, Mike with uh, Sales Acceleration, guys. Thank you very much, guys. You're a very good audience, very good questions. <laughs>